Hello design lovers, it's Ashley Childers and I am so excited about today's video. It's all about lighting and the designer secrets on how to choose the best lighting for your home. I'm going to cover chandeliers, pendants, wall sconces, floor lamps, table lamps, the difference between an incandescent fixture and an LED fixture, and even how to pick a lampshade like a pro. Lighting has a very special place in my heart because when I started in the home furnishings industry 15 years ago, it was as a lighting designer. I launched a lighting company with my husband. So I have spent the past 15 years of my life designing lighting collections and traveling all over the world to work with artisans at our factories. So you could say I know a thing or two about lighting and today friends, you are going to get a masterclass in lighting lighting design. I know you're going to love today's video, so make sure you hit the subscribe button because we launch a new design video every Saturday. Let's get right to it. The first on our list of designer secrets is how to choose a chandelier and a pendant like a designer. First, let's discuss the difference between a chandelier and a pendant and when you should use each one. A chandelier most oftentimes is larger than a pendant and it usually has multiple arms or components to its design. A pendant is a lot of times smaller and usually has a single shape to it. We suggest going for a chandelier style when you want to make a bold statement in a room, like over a dining table or as the feature in a great room or living room. And we love finding unique chandeliers to set the visual tone of a space and create interest. I generally design chandeliers that are more modern in style, but honestly, I love all chandelier styles. From super traditional all the way up to super modern, chandeliers are one of my very favorite elements in a home. The important thing to remember when picking a chandelier or honestly any type of lighting for your home is that it really does need to be a reflection of your style. There are so many beautiful chandelier and pendant designs out there. So go for something that really speaks to you. I personally love mixing a super modern chandelier into a more traditional space or vice versa because it honestly just creates visual tension and interest in a room. So let's get a little bit more technical and talk about chandelier sizes and proper hanging heights. For over a dining table or breakfast table, we like to follow the rule of thumb that if the table is round, we generally stick with a chandelier size that's roughly two thirds the size of the tabletop. And then when we're looking at an oblong or rectangle table, we usually go for a chandelier size that is between one half and two thirds of the table width. Now, there are a lot of chandeliers out there, I design a lot of them as well, that are adjustable, meaning that you can move and articulate the different arms of the chandeliers. I love this type of style of chandelier because it gives you so much flexibility when you're installing it over a table. Since most dining tables are around 30 inches tall, we like to keep the bottom of a chandelier that's hanging over a table anywhere between 68 to 72 inches. This allows enough clearance from the tabletop that you can properly set the table and enjoy a meal with your family visually unobstructed. When hanging a chandelier in the middle of a room, let's say a great room or a living room, I say go as big as possible. Usually in instances like this, the chandelier is the focal point of the room. You do want to keep in mind the ceiling heights in these instances and make sure that you have enough clearance under the bottom of the chandelier to walk through and not hit your head. We like to keep an absolute minimum of eight feet underneath a chandelier in the middle of the room and oftentimes raise it up a lot higher if there are vaulted ceilings. Also, when we are designing larger great rooms and living rooms, we love to use multiple of the same chandelier to create visual interest and symmetry. Before we move on to pendants, I want to share a few technical things that you need to keep in mind when choosing a chandelier. First, you need to check to see if your chandelier or or pendant, or honestly any fixture for that matter, uses standard incandescent or LED bulbs 
or if it has integrated LED components. Let me explain a little bit further. So an integrated LED fixture means that there are these little components called diodes and that is what emits the light. There are also what is called an LED driver. It's usually housed in the ceiling canopy and it is the mechanical part of the lighting fixture that runs the little diodes. Now, usually in an integrated LED fixture, you do not change the lights. They honestly last for a lifetime. Sometimes there are fixtures where you can change the little diodes, but most often you don't. In a standard fixture, Usually you can just use an incandescent or an LED bulb. Now, the biggest difference between these two types of fixtures is that when you are choosing an integrated LED fixture, you need to make sure that it has a dimmable driver that comes in the fixture because if it does not, the lighting fixture will not dim. It does not integrate with like a normal wall switch dimmer like a standard lighting fixture does. So if you want your lighting fixture to dim, you need to make sure that you have a dimmable driver in it if it is an integrated LED fixture. For a standard fixture, they're usually easily dimmable with a dimmable light switch because you can just purchase dimmable, incandescent, or LED bulbs. For standard chandeliers, the sockets are compatible with both dimmable LED light bulbs and incandescent light bulbs. So as long as you have a dimmable wall switch, you can dim standard light fixtures easily with dimmable light bulbs. Okay, y'all, I know that that was a lot of technical information, but I get asked those questions all the time, even by designers sometimes, because it's just a lot of technical information. And when you are investing in a really beautiful light fixture, you want to make sure that you have all the information so you can make the right decision. Let's move on to pendants. So like I said before, pendants are usually a single form shape. And we see them all the time in entries, over breakfast tables, in hallways, and also in bathrooms. I mean, honestly, the all-important kitchen island pendant is probably the most loved lighting fixture in an entire home. So let's get right to it and discuss how to pick a pendant like a pro. First, when choosing a pendant to go over a table, maybe it's a smaller table like a breakfast table, I like to scale it anywhere between 1 8 and one half the diameter of the table. And we like to keep the bottom of the pendant anywhere between 68 to 72 inches from the ground. When choosing and installing a pendant over a kitchen island, we like to make sure that the bottom of the fixture is anywhere between 36 to 42 inches from the top of the countertop. And countertop heights vary, so that's why we like to go from the countertop to the bottom of the fixture instead of from the floor to the bottom of the fixture. If you are doing multiple pendants over a kitchen island, we usually like to hang them anywhere between 40 to 50 inches apart. This works out beautifully. Obviously, it is dependent on the size of the kitchen island, but in our designs, usually that's a good rule of thumb. Now for hallways, bathrooms, and entries, you need to be mindful about how high the bottom of the pendant is off the floor, and if there are any adjacent doors that might bump the fixture when you open them. We always like to keep fixtures in these areas of a home at least seven and a half of feet from the floor. And if the home has eight foot doors, we for sure want to make sure that the pendant is at least eight and a half foot from the ground. Okay, so now that you are a chandelier and pendant expert, let's move on to sconces and lamps. But before we do, I want to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below which one of the lighting tips that I have shared is your favorite. And if you have any other questions about chandelier and pendants that I did not cover. Now on to sconces. So I love using sconces to bring charm to a room, highlight art, or create visual interest on a feature wall. Sconces also add another level of lighting to a space when we talk about lighting levels on a horizontal plane, and it just creates a really welcoming and cozy vibe. Now, when choosing sconces, there's lots of things to consider, but the first is if you want 
to have a hardwired or a plug-in sconce. So a hardwired sconce has uh, wiring that actually wires into an existing junction box in a wall. And then of course a plug-in sconce can just be plugged in to any outlet. Both are beautiful and functional, so let's break down each one. For hardwired options, we use these everywhere from kitchens to bedrooms, bathrooms, dining rooms, and hallways. Now, depending on the ceiling height of a room, we generally install sconces on, let's say, a feature wall anywhere between 48 to 60 inches from the ground. Now, I know that that's a really large range, but the size of the sconce really determines how far from the ground it needs to be. And if it's a longer, like elongated cylindrical sconce, obviously the bottom of it is gonna end up being closer to the ground. And then when installing a sconce over a piece of furniture or a vanity or in a kitchen, we generally like to make sure that the bottom of the sconce falls anywhere between 18 to 28 inches above the surface. Now, obviously, the size and shape of the sconce really dictates this, but it's a general rule of thumb that we like to follow. Also, another favorite of mine when it comes to sconces are picture lights. And we use these all the time in our clients' homes. I love installing picture lights over a really beautiful piece of art. Our rule of thumb for that is if you're hanging a picture light over a piece of art, you generally want it to fall anywhere between eight to 12 inches above the frame. For corded styles, we usually only use this style next to a bed or in a reading nook when we want a little bit more of a nostalgic look. We generally lean towards hardwired sconces, but if you want a sconce in an area that you don't have a junction box, no big deal, just choose a corded style. And for hardwired swing arm and articulated sconces, honestly, the sky's the limit because these are just really functional lighting elements to add to your home. So if you need reading light or you want light next to your bed, we always opt for articulated and swing arm style in sconces because you can adjust them. Now on to one of my very favorite home accessories and one that adds so much visual impact to a room and that is lamps. I have a deep love for lamps of all shapes and sizes. I love antique lamps, modern lamps, buffet lamps, floor lamps, you name it. If it's a lamp, I probably love it. And also, I just love that lamps are the last beautiful layer of lighting in a space. They add so much charm and character, and I want to go through each style with you. Let's start with table lamps, how to choose the correct shape, and what type of lamp shade you should pair with them. I want to just start with what I refer to as full body lamps. Now, these lamps are generally substantial in size and have an overall shape that is full. They are generally ceramic, but can also be made out of wood or glass or metal. I like to place at least one or two full body lamps in each room because they pack such a visual punch. When choosing a shade for a full body lamp, I generally lean towards a drum, empire, or conical style shade. Now let's break down each one of those. Drum shades are as you would expect. They are either completely cylindrical or slightly tapered at the top. Moving on to an empire shade, which is more tapered at the top than a drum and is more of a traditional look. And then we go all the way to a conical style, which I love, which has a very dramatic taper and honestly looks so good with a full body lamp. Now, in addition to the overall shape of the shade, there's lots of other little details to consider when choosing a lampshade, like the edge. A rolled edge is going to give you a clean, modern look as opposed to a taped edge, which is going to be a more classic look. A pleated style versus a flat fabric shade is also something to consider. I personally love a beautiful pleated shade and I love pairing them with a more modern lamp design. Lastly, two other little designer secrets to look for when you are shopping for a lampshade. First, you want to look at the inside of the lampshade. A higher end lampshade is always going to be lined with fabric. Lampshades more often than not are made out of a plastic called styrene. It is rigid and it lets the light through. And the hallmark of a high-end shade is either being completely lined in fabric or not having any styrene inside of it at 
all. The last little detail to look at when you are shopping for a lampshade is what is called the lampshade spider. This is the little metal part at the top of the lampshade that's usually in a crisscross pattern. It is what attaches to the top of the harp on a lamp. Now, I always like to make sure that the spider on the lampshade that I purchase matches the harp and socket on the lamp that it is going on. This is a designer secret, y'all. You don't want those metals to clash, so make sure that you match your spider to your socket and heart. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of lampshades have lining on the inside and that is a hallmark of a really nice lampshade, but sometimes it can affect the light output of the lamp, meaning the color or hue of the light. So when you are shopping for a lampshade, make sure that you put the shade on a lamp and turn it on so you can see the color output of the shade. You don't want to have a bunch of shades in a room that give off different tones. Like, let's say you've got a lamp on one side of the room that gives off a really yellow cast and then on the opposite side of the room, all the lampshades give off a white light. Don't wanna do that. So just make sure that you kind of coordinate your lampshades in the room. Not necessarily that they have to all be the same fabric or color, just that the light up output that they give out is similar. Okay, moving on to the next type of lamp that I wanna go over. That is a buffet or candlestick style of lamp. And I love these types of lamps on a buffet or a sideboard or a chest of doors. They're usually taller in height. And I always like to put usually a funky shade on these types of lamps because there's not a ton of visual interest usually in the lamp body itself because it's tall and slender. So I like to use an elongated shade or sometimes I even like to use metal shades on these types of lamps. As for petite style lamps, I love adding these sweet little additions to let's say a bookshelf or in the corner of a cabinet or even on a stack of books or a vanity or desk area. They add so much charm and whimsy and are a really fun place to use a really interesting shade material. It could be raffia or pleated fabric, little scalloped edge, the sky's the limit honestly and because they're so small and unique, you can really go all out on your lampshade. Lastly, let's discuss floor lamps. I have a huge crush on floor lamps and floor lamps are having a major moment right now in interior design. I love everything from grand arching styles to small little reading lamps that are designed to accompany an armchair. As with the rest of lamps, choose a floor lamp that suits your needs and style preferences and look for unique shapes that complement your interior design. Okay y'all, today was literally a masterclass in lighting design and I hope today's video got you excited and confident to choose lighting for your home. Please let me know in the comments which lighting tips were your favorite from today and if you want even more designer tips and tricks, you're going to want to watch this playlist next. For more daily design goodness, follow us along on Instagram at Ashley Childers Home. And as always, thank you for watching. And remember, good design is for everyone. So create a home that you love, be confident in choosing lighting for your space, and fall in love with where you live one room at a time.